the mom of a first grade student. I've started getting curious about how my child is learning how to read in school. I'm a PhD level behavioral scientist, and I made this video because I'm trying to make sense of some contradictions I see between the well-established science of reading and how kids are actually being taught to read. Here's one thing I'm really confused about. Perhaps you've noticed your child being assigned books according to their just right reading level. These reading levels follow the alphabet like A, B, C, etc. What's strange is that these books often contain words that are pretty hard for a little kid to sound out, such as community or purple. It seems like kids are just supposed to memorize these words. To make it easier, kids are taught tricks for how to guess words when they get stuck. They can, for example, guess a word that makes sense. They can use the picture to guess the word, and they can even just skip the word entirely. Now you might be wondering, can't kids also just use phonics? It's true that phonics is suggested as one of various tools kids can use to figure out a word, but as I hope will become clear over the course of this video, what's actually happening in the early grades is that kids are not learning enough phonics skills to sound out the types of words that show up in the books they are actually reading. Furthermore, the other cue-based strategies, such as guessing from pictures or from context, are, according to experts, actually undermining their ability to read. All of this controversy got me wondering, will my kid learn how to read this way? I decided to do an experiment to find out, using Reading A to Z, also known as Raz Kids. This popular reading app uses books at the just right reading level. So I'm going to show you an online book, but what we learn here should apply to regular books that also use these just right levels. Here's how I did my experiment. First, I had my daughter read a book on Raz Kids. Then I had her read the same story, but this time with the pictures covered. Then I had her read the harder words from the story with no pictures and no context. And finally, I tested these words again the next day to see how much my daughter had learned. So what do you think? Will she learn these new words even though she doesn't have the phonics skills to sound these words out? Let's see what happened. I eight paint my swing swing mm -hmm. purple uh -huh. I paint mm -hmm. the fence purple mm -hmm. yeah it's amazing how you're reading without even looking at the at the words I paint the door purple great Look at all that purple. Mm-hmm. I paint my mom purple. Mom. Doesn't. Ought not like purple. Overall, not too bad, and she's nailing the word purple. Let's see what happens when we take away the pictures. I put my swag up. Okay, great. Up. That's not what I was expecting. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. I <laughs> it doesn't work that way. <laughs> you can tell she's really yeah, thrown off by the lack of pictures. Right. She even forgets momentarily how to sound out words at all. Best. It's a little hard without the picture. Uh, 
paint. I like paint the She's starting to get the hang of it again. She doesn't have pictures to look at, but the sentences are pretty repetitive, so she can kind of figure it out from the context and the pattern. Mom. Does not like purple paint. Nice. That was a strong finish. Now let's see what happens when she doesn't have any pictures or context to help her. Let's see how she handles words that she doesn't really know how to sound out. Those words were a little tricky, but she'll definitely get this word. I mean, she saw this word, what, a million times? It's like she'd never seen the word before in her life. You can actually see the camera frame shaking because I'm so stunned. When we tried again the next day, it wasn't much better. I wasn't expecting this at all. How could she be exposed to a word so many times, have it appear on every single page, and then not even recognize it five minutes later? Now, she did get some words right without pictures or context, but check out how her accuracy changed over time. The green boxes represent correct responses. When the pictures went away, her accuracy suffered. When she tried the words without pictures or context, she did get some words right, but notice which words they were. They were the words she was able to sound out. The words she previously guessed from pictures or context, she could no longer read once those cues were taken away. Nor could she read them the next day. Okay, but you might be wondering, why didn't you just help your kid learn those new words? But here's the thing, in first grade, Parents are really encouraged to let their kids read these books independently. Here's a video directed to parents that explains this. Their teacher is helping them be independent, support your child in being independent. You could provide your child with a timer if you want them to read and try to stretch their stamina, but also reread their texts over and over again. We want to encourage children to keep reading, or even that they're reading with a stuffed animal or an action figure they take some time to set up a reading spot where they can focus on their reading with limited distractions. Now I'm not saying that it's all independent reading, but there is a lot of it. And it's not clear to me how a beginning reader who doesn't yet know how to read a lot of words is going to learn how to sound out new words and learn from her mistakes without a grown-up looking over her shoulder. Maybe if we want kids to read independently, we should give them books with words they have actually been taught how to read. So this brings me back to the word purple. Why was it so difficult for my daughter to learn how to read this word, even though she was able to guess purple by looking at pictures and guess it again by looking at context? Well, it turns out that guessing words from different clues, such as pictures, context, or repetitive sentence patterns, is a highly inefficient 
and ineffective way to learn how to read. Incredibly, this method, which is called three cueing, is strongly promoted in the Lucy Calkins Reading Workshop Curriculum, one of the best-selling reading programs in the U.S. Many children who learn these methods have to be retrained later before they can learn to read properly. But here you might be wondering, don't we all use context to better understand what we're reading? Sure, we do use context for reading comprehension. However, before we can comprehend what we read, we must read the actual words themselves. This is known as decoding. If you can't properly decode, context is not going to help you make much sense of what you're reading. Research has shown that people who are successful readers automatically process all the letters of a word as they are decoding. They do this because at some point when they were little, they learned how to sound out the words using the letters. People who are successful readers do not use three cueing. They do not decode words from context, from pictures, or from sentence patterns. This makes sense if you think about it. You're not going to be very successful reading the words in the Constitution or the Gettysburg Address if you're hunting around for clues. Decades of research have shown that it is in fact poor readers who continue to decode words using clues. People who read this way are slower at reading, they read more inaccurately, and they are more likely to find reading difficult and unpleasant. Unfortunately, school districts such as ours across the country have spent millions of dollars on curricula that promote these ineffective strategies. Parents, educators, and activists have begun mobilizing to demand that kids start getting instruction that aligns with the science of reading. So you might be wondering, what actually does work to teach a kid how to read the word purple? Well, to find out the answer to that question, please watch part two of this series, where I do another experiment, this time using phonics. Phonics.